Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, good morning everybody, uh, I have been asked by many students to give you a list of reading material and so on. So I prepared a, a list, uh, but before that I wish to give you two commentaries. I think one you know, um, uh, elephant and blind man. So if you uh, several different blind men write a story about the elephant, uh, each of them will uh, say different things. So one would say that it is like a rope, another would say that it is like a pillar, some other one would say it is like something else. Uh, depending on um, what you touch. So I think uh, thermoacoustics itself is very difficult and there are a uh, lot of issues there and each person knows a fraction of the issues and acoustic itself uh, even though it is a somewhat well understood subject I mean you have uh, I mean nobody knows everything and then so what you speak depends on what you know I think very much. So I think that this issue is there. Uh, the second thing I want to say is the writing depends on the nature of the person also. I will again tell a story about the elephant. <coughs> so let us say different people from different countries uh, wrote, a, uh, wrote stories about elephant or books about elephant. <coughs> so if Indians were writing we would say how can elephants waste time in the evenings or something like that. Uh, a, a British person might write about how to kill elephants, how to hunt elephants. American will write about how to make fat elephants. Uh, Russian would say uh, which liquor the elephant likes. Um, French would say love life of elephants and Germans probably write elephant science in 12 volumes and big big books. So it depends on uh, what is the culture origin of those guys. So you have to keep all this in mind but uh, here is my uh, must read uh, list on acoustics which will probably make you faint. So this is the must read list and, and then there is another list which is not so must read. <coughs> so I will give a commentary on what is there in each book. Uh, so you can um, pay attention to the comment I think that is really important from my experience of reading books. I have read all these books in bits and pieces. Some of the books I have read fully some here and there. Uh, I think the simplest book is Kinsler and Frey. This book is found in different editions with more co-authors or less co-authors. Uh, this is a really uh, nice book and you can get the full reference by searching in Google or something. <coughs> uh, so this is more uh, I, I put the names for to give uh, my version of the uh, commentary. So this is very simple if you want to get started with acoustic this is the book to read. Now uh, uh, of course we are uh, really worried about thermoacoustics so we are uh, not just concerned about acoustics in the sense of propagation of sound but we are really concerned about how sound is generated also and from that sense a very simple book would be uh, by Dowling and Fox Williams uh, titled Sound and Sources of Sound. It is a really simple and nice and elegant book. Again these are my views and uh, it need not be somebody else's views uh, but as the instructor here it is my views. Uh, uh, next in line these are not in any particular order but uh, for each I will give you my commentary. So Morse and Ingard uh, titled Theoretical Acoustics. This is more uh, like a physicist talking about acoustics. I mean you have engineering stuff in it very much but the flavor of it is like a uh, physicist view of things and uh, the foundations of acoustics by Skrutsik. This is a very nice and comprehensive book uh, and it explains not just acoustic it gives the necessary math ground, math background and this is the best book I found for multidimensional acoustics like uh, you know uh, waves and ducts and annulus and, and, and spheres and so on. Now uh, Pierce uh, titled acoustics and introduction to its physical principles and application. This is what I had to study as a uh, when I took classes in acoustics. This is <coughs> a nice book but it is a difficult book but I mean graduate students are supposed to do difficult things. So I think uh, uh, this is a good book uh, but it is not so easy reading but you have to put effort to it but it is worth reading this book. Uh, this Lighthill's book is a classic. Lighthill is a famous person, person in acoustics and uh, even more famous in aeroacoustics. So he has written a book on waves and fluids it is uh, fairly simple I think you will follow it and uh, uh, Okindan and Okindan I do not know if my pronunciation is right. 
uh, waves and uh, compressible flow. This is again a, a more like a physicist view of things, uh, it is more general view, but it is a very nice book. Now, Professor Munjal is a famous Indian professor in acoustics, uh, sorry, uh, he has written a book titled Acoustics of Ducts and Mufflers. So, this is very good for duct acoustics. Your duct acoustics is a big branch of subject as well as acoustics of you know, middle of nowhere and, and so on that also can be studied. So, this is a very good for uh, duct acoustics and he has uh, given applications to silencers and uh, other things as well. Now, we term uh, linear and nonlinear waves. This is a really lovely book, it is a math book, uh, math, math kind of book, but it is really uh, classic and each time I read it, uh, I mean I, I learn new things and I think uh, it is a, a must read book I think. The last one, Cytonian and Asymptotic Modeling of Fluid Flow Phenomena. Uh, you, there you can see how the acoustic equations are obtained rigorously. As I mentioned to you, uh, um, what is flow, what is acoustics and there is always flow when there is sound and how to separate hydrodynamic fluctuations from acoustic fluctuations, those things are uh, the framework to derive those equations are given in this book by Setonian. It is a uh, uh, advanced book, but it is uh, really worth reading it because if, uh, as I mentioned to you in thermoacoustics, you always have a base flow, I mean because there is a, even in the steady circumstances you have a combusting flow and which is non-uniform and so on. Over that, riding on that is the acoustic. So, how to separate fluctuations in hydrodynamics because hydrodynamics have vortex shedding and so on, the fluctuations, how to separate that with acoustics. That is a non-trivial task and the asymptotic modeling, uh, asymptotic analysis can be used to do this and that is given in this uh, book. Now, uh, uh, the book by Reinstra and Introduction of Acoustics, uh, I think you can download it freely from the internet if you Google search and anything free is good and it is probably uh, a bit mathematical, but it is I mean some of you who are mathematically inclined would uh, would really like it. Uh, there is no not quite uh, yet a book on thermoacoustic instabilities itself, but Kulig has written a book titled, it is an e-book in the sense it is a CD and if you write to him, he will give you a CD freely. I think it can also be downloaded from the web. Unsteady motions in combustors for propulsion systems, but he is specifically speaking about uh, or most of the time he is speaking about solid rocket motors, uh, but it is uh, Kulig is a very famous figure in the subject and he has written a comprehensive monograph on this uh, topic and it is uh, very interesting and, and if you are studying instabilities in solid rocket motors, this is a uh, must read book I think. And Ho is a very famous figure in aeroacoustics. He is the one who is credited, uh, one of the persons credited with the theory of vortex sound, and uh, he has written some very famous papers. So he has written one book on theory of vortex sound, and another one on acoustics of fluid structure interaction. They are uh, very nice books, uh, very comprehensive book. And the last one, um, Handbook of Acoustics. It is a uh, fat book. You can use it for weightlifting, but it has everything in acoustics. Uh, uh, it's I think it is 10,000 rupee or something, but it is really a nice book. It, it covers uh, if you are introduced to acoustics and you want to start off, yeah, every topic has articles on it by experts. So, this Croker is, he did not write the handbook, he is like an editor of the handbook. So, this is my reference list my, with my specific commentary as to uh, what you can get out of it. So, I hope uh, there are any questions I can happily answer about the books itself. But there is no precise crisp test book on introduction to thermoacoustics or, or dummies get to thermoacoustics. It does not exist at all. You have to read uh, uh, papers. That is what it is. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So, if there are no questions, we will get back to what we were talking about that is adding uh, energy in phase. Oh no, before that I have to talk about the assignment submission. So, I told you like in two or three weeks you can do the assignment. So, one week is over. So, on March 14th you can submit it. I think. Uh, you can uh, get your computer programming running. If you know MATLAB it is a few minutes I think and then maybe report writing would take a few hours and analyzing the results which you should do first over a few hours. So, it is not a very difficult assignment or something. Now, if you do not know programming language or MATLAB or anything of that sort, maybe two or three days to uh, get to learn to do stuff and then a few hours to finish it. So, I expect you to submit it on March 
fourteenth a small report and, and so on. Okay. I hope you know what was that said. Equation with temperature well, gradient. That's all. Uh, only so temperature, temperature gradient. No temperature need of gradient. We have to assume something. Yeah, I mean, you are assume some whatever is based on your experience. Okay. Assume or see what are the values given in the papers and so. On. And, and solve for a one d five. One d five with closed closed end or open open end. Some classical yeah. condition. Yeah, uh, you can ask any question. Yeah, in a, in a closed. Uh, open tube. Yeah. We connect a speaker one end. Yeah. And uh, uh, then, what will be the boundary conditions at the speaker? Uh, should we take P dash? So, if you have a loudspeaker, so strictly speaking, close close means there's nothing else in it. But if you have a loudspeaker, you are actually sending in a uh, uh, U prime there. You are imposing a velocity fluctuation there. So, either you can impose a admittance or impedance of the speaker. Or you can uh, um, uh, write some source strength based on that, or you can. Uh, I think I think you best to write uh, some equation for the admittance of the speaker or the impedance of the speaker. I think that's probably the best boundary condition. So if you put a speaker at the closed end, it stops being a uh, closed end. So if you have a to a practical terms, if you have a speaker, you can put it and uh, you can actually measure the admittance. That's probably the, uh, from the, with the two microphone technique or the impedance tube technique or something like that. But the moment you put anything else, because uh, it, it stops being a closed end, and you are actually putting energy into it. So if the energy is flowing in the linear framework. You have admittance. So, but can we say uh, whether it is near to it or generation or? Uh, usually, uh, it it would be. You can look at the wave, but if the uh, it in, it's very possible that it's uh, the wave structure looks close to that of a. A uh, closed closed end. If you are having a closed closed pipe and you put a speaker near the closed end, and speaker drives very well at the closed end, and at the if you put it in an open end or uh, it won't drive at all. Uh, so yeah, I think it it, it will be close to that, but there is energy coming in, and energy comes in there must be admittance. But then there is also energy loss, which is why the amplitude eventually doesn't grow infinitely, but it will reach some value. So there are losses, and that have has to be modeled somehow, also, in either as a volume losses or as a boundary losses. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So we were looking at uh, <coughs> Rayleigh criteria, and I asked you to think about what happens when you add energy um, at different phases. So I'll draw the diagrams and see if you have these kind of results. So this is what would happen if you add heat in phase. So here it's more like an impulse. Actually, in real combustion, it won't be impulse; it will be distributed. But here it is in, in phase. That's what it is. So next we'll draw out of phase. So uh, this is so q prime q dot prime out of phase with p prime. Now if you have uh, so here it's at the as the pressure is at the highest point. Here I'm adding heat as the pressure is at the lowest point. But if you uh, can have uh, here or here, and let me draw those. So if I'm adding it here, so it's almost as if the um, you know the period um, shrunk or the frequency increased, and uh, of course this is a hand waving explanation. We'll try to work this out 
mathematically and if I'm adding at the other end so here the period kind of elongates because you are kind of stretching the wave so you have frequency uh, coming down here uh, period comes down frequency increases in this scenario so here pressure is zero but you are adding quarter period uh, before and quarter period after so here period increases frequency decreases so whereas there is no change in the amplitude of the oscillation so we are not really driving or damping but we are just changing the uh, period of the oscillation or the frequency of the oscillations so uh, we uh, uh, we said that there is some this this is like a graphical illustration or a crude hand waving illustration of relic criteria what the relic criteria says is that if heat is added in phase with the pressure again I am speaking only about fluctuations then you produce acoustic energy and if this acoustic energy is more than the losses then you will exhibit instability so this is the Rayleigh criteria I will write this in an equation form So this would be the acoustic driving and if this is more than more than the losses write this below so if this is greater than this equation would basically mean that this term here is driving and this is losses or damping so if driving is more than damping instability will set in so this term indicate whether acoustic power is acoustic energy is input by the combustion process but you may you can have acoustic energy being created by the combustion process process but you may still not have combustion instability or thermoacoustic instability because your losses may be more than what you are putting in and then a disturbance will decay so you have to have that much driving which is more than the losses then only you will have the onset of instability i hope this is clear so this is the interpretation of Rayleigh criteria any questions So L means loss. Let me write that. Yeah, it's written. So there could be several loss mechanisms. That's why I have the subscript Li. In practical scenario, how do we control where we have had heat and where we? It's a very good question. I'm surprised. In fact, that was what is written here. I wanted to have an example. Uh, so uh, let me repeat the question. Uh, in practical scenario, how do you control where we add heat? How we add heat? and how the losses are so it is easy to address the losses so uh, uh, I mean losses can be through nozzle or or, uh, or different uh, things at the boundary and so on so if you have access to that uh, you can ac have access to that but generally you may or may not if it is a ground based combustor perhaps you may have some access like a burner or something or a furnace but if it is a rocket or something I mean everything is designed based on performance and then the instability sets in I was not here last Friday right so I went to see some instability and then the uh, uh, rocket I told you is 
designed to give incredible performance absolutely. I mean I was really impressed with the design, but it is designed only for that, it is not designed for stability. Uh, so, and then the guy says do not touch anything, the program manager uh, and I want a solution today and it is such a complicated problem uh, that even to, you do not know what equation to write, but they say by the end of the meeting tell me what to do and this is the way it is. But in fact, if you read some of the historical accounts by Professor Price uh, <coughs> in some of the papers or books, he says that this has always been the case. So, they call some black magicians and then you do something to fix it. So, I will give you an example of how you can change the uh, way where the distribution is affected. Uh, for example, <coughs> if you have a gas burning thing and, and uh, like a premix burner let us say and you want to adjust the location of the uh, uh, heating place. So, what you can do is to you can send the same flow rate that cannot be touched because of the uh, performance, but then you can adjust the inlet diameter and change the velocities. So, that you can find out how much the vortex moves you can alter that perhaps you can alter the shedding time of the vortex. So, you can you have some leeway over the time scale you can and once the vortex velocity changes I mean it may burn at some other place uh, that is one thing. If you have like a uh, uh, like a um, air blast atomizer or something like that, uh, what you can do is uh, you want to change the timing let us say or the heat release. So, basically timing goes like um, droplet size right I mean the evaporation uh, depends on droplet size you studied d squared law and all that and then there is a modified d squared law in, in the presence of velocity fluctuations and so on. So, you could actually change the injector which will inject same amount of mass flow rate, but a slightly different droplet distribution or something and, and so that the uh, you have more droplet with smaller diameter or less droplets with larger diameter and then that will change the time scale. So, that is one thing you can physically alter the location of the injector then it will change differently. You can alter the air velocity in the injector and uh, uh, and so on. So, there are a few things you can uh, play with, but there is uh, and you can uh, if, if you are talking about a uh, uh, fuel supply you, you if it is not choked and if the flow rate is pulsing then you can choke the fuel flow rate I mean you can choke the fuel supply line uh, so that fuel flow rate does not choke. So, uh, uh, or you can play with the lengths of the tail pipe if that is allowed to. Uh, it is hard to give a general answer because generally you have to see what can be changed because you are not planning for this uh, because uh, management says get things done yesterday and this is a subject where you do not even know how to write equations and so on. So, you and performance everybody knows everybody who studied propulsion 1 knows how to design a vehicle for performance and you design for incredible performance and you are not accounted for anything and suddenly instability happens and then your bosses are, are breathing down. And, and telling you that you have to fix it and their bosses are breathing down the parliament is breathing down on, on, on uh, annoying the hell out of this incompetent uh, uh, company or organization that they cannot stop this. So, there is a lot of pressure and then you have to fix something. So, it is never really planned for being this although uh, I mean if you listen to big shots they will say that you have to design for instability performance and they say that I mean there are programs which for whatever it is worth calculate the Eigen values of the systems and whether they are stable or not. In, so, some companies are doing it in some sense, but it is really calculations are far from satisfactory and so on, but nevertheless it is a secondary thing I mean the primary thing is performance. So, when the thing comes then you have to do some fix or black magic and then or other passive controls like you can put baffles where there is a velocity maximum. So, that you try to um, the acoustic standing wave wants to go some way. So, it wants to be at a velocity maxima and you put a baffle there forcing the velocity to come down. So, this will uh, this uh, will make some kind of mismatch and uh, so there are lot of ways you can um, stop this and uh, you can even change the length of the combustor to change the acoustic length scale, but that in a aerospace situation may not be possible because weight will increase if you increase the length if you decrease there will be not enough residence time and so on. Uh, so, you have to see there is almost nothing you can touch, but you have to stop it. So, some magic has to be done. So, there is no um, possibility to give a general answer uh, or even if I give it would not be of any worth, 
but I think I have given you some ideas as to a few things to play with. So, that depends specifically on the situation at hand, uh, but eventually this equation is always holding, but uh, what causes this q prime to come in phase with p prime that depends on the specific mechanism of instability in that specific configuration. So, one way is to adjust the timings such that you can, uh, so you can play with the appropriate thing to adjust the timing of heat release with respect to the pressure which will remove the instability or create some kind of damping mechanism and uh, interfere with the uh, uh, some increase boost this term or decrease this term. So, that is that is what it is. So, we can uh, send in some other acoustic waves so that this uh, condition is satisfied. Yeah. So, let me give you an example we will work out this problem soon. So, we can have a combustor let us say and uh, there is a flame here and uh, uh, let us say it has certain q dot prime and, uh, and now it is going it this is a function of u prime uh, uh, or u prime minus tau after a time delay and then it is growing unstable then what you can do is maybe you can put a, a loudspeaker which uh, uh, now the, this without the loudspeaker if you have a hard end this system has certain Eigen values, but you can alter the imaginary part of Eigen value by putting a speaker and maybe make a system which was originally unstable stable. So, this is kind of like the anti sound concept and this is the uh, crude form of active control there are very fancy and advanced forms of active control and in reality you will not be able to put a loudspeaker in a combustor because I think uh, nobody would want to do that. You would probably put uh, uh, a, a pulsed fuel injection or something, so that you create another uh, fuel oscillation. So, you have a primary heat release rate, but you can have like a q dot prime 1 or, or main, which is in phase creating all the problems, but you can have q dot prime secondary and, and this can be designed such that uh, the um, damping it produces it interferes with the pressure wave such that it creates damping and that can be more than what this main driving is. So, that is probably the actual strategy. Uh, so, you are right in principle it is possible, but in practice can you do it reliably that is the question. So, uh, active controls are in principle supposed to work very well, but the uh, engineers and the managers do not have faith in it because they have to work for several thousand hours without failing mechanical components that is the reason they give for not having these things. Um, but I do not know some instant may they may come. Passive controls are quite popular because they may not work everywhere wonderfully and all that, but if it works now it will work tomorrow it will work one year later. So, uh, it is simple. So, uh, engineers like simple things. So, they have passive control. So, you are absolutely right in that sense. Any other question? Okay. So, uh, the next uh, agenda here is to uh, derive this with in some sense. Okay. Uh, so, what I am planning to do is to get a derivation of Rayleigh criteria with some very simplified assumptions. You may get very annoyed with the assumptions, but uh, that is what it is uh, and I will explain why you have to make these assumptions. Then I will work a problem out like this a very simple model problem where you can actually translate this Rayleigh criteria into eigenvalues and eigenvectors and, and whether you can calculate the growth rate and decay rate and, and so on in a very simple configuration. So, that will give you the idea of how to set up this calculation. So, we are trying to derive Rayleigh criteria and the assumptions are so uniform steady state properties along the tube. So, then you cannot really call it combustor, it is more like a model combustor or something. Okay. So, we will say 
p bar is constant that may be okay for many combustors because you are having low Mach number flows and, and change uh, I mean p plus gamma m squared is a constant so p goes like gamma m squared so, so small values of m you may not change things so much. But uh, the next assumption T bar is constant is really crazy because the moment you burn something temperature has to go up that is the precise idea we are burning things uh, and so I mean this is really off the roof. But then if you do not keep T bar constant I mean the equations are much more difficult to deal with and so on uh, and that is the reason we so we will take the easy way out and say that we will model the things for some kind of average temperature in the combustor. We can always justify what you are doing, but uh, and every model is wrong anyway. Uh, so, if we can learn something from the answer, then the model is good, or if we can calculate accurately, accurately as in if we can predict whatever is happening, then the model is good. So, in, in any model is wrong, the issue is whether it is useful or can you do anything with it, can you learn something from it. So, so we will um, say assume and average temperature. There is one configuration where this is okay, one aerospace propulsive system where T bar is constant. Huh? Didn't hear you loudly. Can you speak loudly and yeah, absolutely. In rocket temperature is almost constant in a few degrees. So, uh, just say constant. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, in rockets T bar is constant. Uh, P bar will change, but not so much. So, I think T bar is constant. There you can get away with, but not in a uh, like a combustor with a flame like a gas turbine localized flame. I think it's a very bad assumption. And in, in rockets, the flame is uniformly there everywhere, and uh, uh, really it's kind of well insulated. Uh, from the surroundings and so on. So, it is a very good assumption for rockets, but not for furnaces or gas turbine engines and so on. And second gas is inviscid and non heat conducting. And I said that uh, we, we discussed this uh, uh, at low frequencies, this was ok. And we will do oscillations which are only uh, I think we can do 3D and, and so on. Uh, I will even derive something in a generalized sense, but we will work out the details for only problems just to keep things simple. This is really not a serious problem if you have the ability to calculate then there is no problem. And uh, the fourth one is CPCV uh, gamma. Are constants. Uh, this is okay for a gas turbine or, or a domestic burner and so on, but not okay for maybe a solid rocket motor and, and, and so on. Uh, but I think compared to this assumption, uh, these assumptions are really not that bad. And uh, uh, we will say that we are having small fluctuations, so that we can deal with the linearized framework. So, this is kind of assumptions for what is to follow for the entire semester, except I will deal with uh, some nonlinear effects uh, later on, but mostly I will deal with linear effects. So, having declared that I am guilty about everything, now we proceed to uh, get the equations. So, we we have the continuity momentum and energy equations. It is quite con con convenient to use the momentum and energy equation to derive uh, the equations. So, energy would be
where q dot prime is oscillatory heat release rate per unit mass. Sometimes you see it being expressed as just q, q bar prime that would mean that it is heat release rate per unit volume. So, depend you have to read the uh, if you are reading a paper read it carefully to find out what exactly is the notation. Also many people do not use this dot uh, which indicates that it is a heat release rate they just write q but it is implicit that it is a rate. Now uh, what we can do is we can multiply this by u prime and multiply this by p prime over rho bar let us see what you get. So, and I have assumed rho bar to be constant so rho bar do by do t of half well I will Now, if I look at the energy equation and I am multiplying it by p prime over rho bar, so I will get So, we can call this term let us say we call it c square and like the speed of sound. So, we can divide throughout by this term and you will get dou by dou t of p prime squared by 2 rho bar c square plus p prime so u prime by dou x equal to dou minus 1 p prime q dot prime over c square. Now, we call this equation 1 and 2 we can add 1 and 2 and you would get u prime square plus p prime square by 2 rho bar c square plus rho by rho x of p prime u prime. Uh, if you were doing 3D this would be like del dot p prime u prime uh, this would be equal to gamma minus 1 p prime q dot prime over c square. So, this is very similar to the derivation we did when we derived the classical acoustic energy corollary. So, if you average this uh, over a control volume, so and then this can also be average. So, in own d it is like area times d x right. And I drop the area. Uh, so, I will get In a own, this is this would be what you get in a general sense, but here it would be p prime u prime 2 I mean you will get p prime u prime across the boundaries the difference.
if you have a closed duct we can drop this term this will be equal to 0 for a let us say for a close close duct or open open or closed open. So, any of these things this term would go away. <coughs> so, then you can see that if heat release rate is in phase with pressure fluctuation then the acoustic energy in the system will grow right I mean that is what this is the message come coming out of this. So, this is like the losses unless energy is input from the surface and in the case of a solid propellant for example, the propellant can add energy from the surface, but in a other furnace kind of situation or a gas turbine kind of situation this term would represent the losses and this would be the acoustic driving. So, if there are losses the acoustic energy will grow if the driving which is the correlation between P prime and Q prime acoustic pressure and heat release rate is more than that of the damping, but if the damping is more than that of the driving the uh, net contribution will be negative. So, acoustic energy will decay is this clear any questions. So, if you say P prime equal to P hat cos omega t and Q prime equal to Q hat cos omega t plus phi. So, P prime Q prime integral over 0 to t would be P hat Q hat integral 0 to t cos omega t times cos omega t plus phi. So, this could be written as p prime q prime integral 0 to t this would be cos omega t plus omega t plus phi. So, be 2 omega t plus phi plus cos phi over 2 d t I hope this formula is right and the first term what will be? if you integrate the first term you will get 0 why because this is a periodic term and the second term will give cos omega t times t over 2. So, this would be p hat q hat uh, so if I average over a cycle I put a 1 over t. So, t over 2 times t. So, this is p hat q hat over 2. So, Oh, sorry, I missed the phase. Times cos phi, which is equal to phi. So, I hope this is right. So, if I will pass. So, if you have p prime which goes like p hat cos omega t and q prime going like q hat cos omega t I should put dot here just to be consistent and then uh, <coughs> the correlation would be p hat uh, 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 q dot hat cos phi over 2. So, if cos phi is 0 
then what happens? What is the value of cos 0? Cos 0 is 1. So, then um, phi equal to 0 should imply cos phi equal to 1. So, the driving would be is there is also other factors like there is a gamma minus 1 over c squared I will not worry about it. So, driving I will say proportional to p hat q hat uh, cos phi which is going like p hat q hat. Now, if you had phi equal to 180 degree your cos on it would be minus 1. So, this is like uh, damping and at c equal to 90 plus or minus you will have cos 90 equal to 0 right. So, that way there is uh, no driving no damping. So, what is the phi uh, the phase between uh, uh, phase where you get driving. So, you have to have minus 90 degrees less than or equal to phi. Driving and so I hope this is clear. I do agree that I did a very simplistic argument and keeping rho bar as constant and t bar as constant was uh, very bad assumptions, but okay, we get some result out of it. Any questions? And what determines the phi? Where does this phi come from? The loud day. Time lag. Time lag. Time lag between? P dash and Q dash. And so, uh, every uh, uh, combustor will have certain P prime and certain Q prime and the relation between P prime and Q prime depends on the acoustics, impedance, geometry and all that. Uh, but in many combustors, heat release rate is proportional to velocity fluctuations. In some situations, heat release rate may be proportional to pressure fluctuations. In some other ones, it may be having components from both. In any case, it is uh, it, it depends on the specific mechanism. So there are pressure coupled responses and velocity coupled responses. Like in solid rockets, the pressure coupled response would be really dominant because the burning rate depends very much on the pressure fluctuations. In a gas turbine situations, it is a velocity coupled uh, response which is uh, quite interesting. And and in a or in a re -K tube which you saw in the demo yesterday, it does which what was it? Was it pressure coupled response or velocity coupled response? It was velocity coupled response. We are looking at heat transfer from a hot wire driving the sound in a re -K tube, and the uh, pressure fluctuations are almost nothing compared to the atmospheric pressure. But the velocity fluctuations are comparable to the mean flow, and they are driving the oscillations as we saw in the re -K tube. So in different situations, it's different. But in whatever be it, if you have the phase coming between plus 90 and minus 90 and this phase depends on the various time delays involved in the system which depends on the physical mechanism which can be different. But if you are driving, you have to have this condition that is you have uh, uh, your phase between heat release and pressure will be between minus 90 and plus 90 degree or that heat release is correlated with the pressure. So, then you have driving if it is uncorrelated or if you have a contribution of cos 180 degree then you actually have damping. So, outside this regime you actually have the flame damping the acoustics within this regime nine, minus 90 to plus 90 if you have the time delay or the phase then you will have driving. So, uh, that is that's, uh, that, that's the message of uh, this derivation here. So, Rayleigh criterion says that if the heat release rate is in phase with the pressure oscillations then energy is added to the acoustic field and if this addition is more than what is being lost then what happens? Then you have instability, there will be growth of the oscillations and if, if the addition is less than what is lost, then you have uh, decay of the oscillation. So, I will stop here and see you tomorrow. Thank you. If you have any more questions, okay, thanks.